Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Elhamdülillah. We've been asked. Uh, this is our break from the uh, proceeding in the uh, last pages of the Quran uh, to uh, break between quarters, and so we're doing ayat al kursi. We'll hear the ayah read as it should be. Allahu <laughs> la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ما ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم الحمد لله وشكر الله إن شاء الله تعالى وتك دي just this verse this evening and this afternoon and Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayy al-qayyum la ta'akhudhu sinatun wa lanawm lahu ma fi al-samuwat wa ma fi al-ard man dha alladhi yashfa'u indahu inda bi'idhni ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum wa la yuhiyatun bi shay'i min ilmih illa bima sha'u wa si'a kursiyahu al-samuwat wa al-ard وَلَا يُؤُودُهُ حِفْتُهُمَا وَهُوا لَعِيْهُ الْعَظِيمُ Allah, no God is there but He, the living, the everlasting source of all being. Slumber and sleep overtake Him. His is all that is in the heavens and all on earth. Who should ever intercede with Him, save by His leave? He knows all that takes place before their eyes and all that lies yet unknown beyond them. And they encompass nothing of his knowledge but what he wills. His very footstool compasses the heavens and earth, and preserving them burdens him not. And he is the all high, the incomparably supreme. So, the context of this verse in uh, Surah Al Baqarah is uh, the, the, uh, the second uh, surah of the Quran, the cow is uh, jihad in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, two pages prior, uh, there's uh, verse uh, 2.242. Uh, Even thus does Allah make plain his verses that happily you make me comprehend. Or can you not have considered those who fled their homes by the thousands out of cowardice to die fighting. So Allah told them, die all of you, and only after a time did he revive them. Allah is truly bounteous of favor upon mankind, yet most men show no thanks. So fight in the path of Allah, and know that Allah is all hearing, all knowing. Who shall be the signal one to lend Allah a gracious, handsome loan, that he may multiply it for him boundless times over? And Allah alone withholds and lavishes, and to him shall you be returned. And followed uh, by two pages about the jihad of Talut, or King Saul leading the jihad of many Israel, who were the mu'minin of their time, against uh, Jalut, or Goliath who was killed by Dawood as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and they smashed and routed them by, the, by leave of Allah and David slew Goliath and Allah gave him kingship and wisdom and taught him of everything he willed did not Allah repel some people with others the earth had been laid waste and, but Allah is of limitless bounty to all peoples of the world those are the verses of Allah that we, which we recite to you with utter truth. And truly, you are of the prophetic messengers. 
And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has thus uh, raised the matter of fighting in the path of Allah. And so in this verse, he sets out the divine attributes that clarify to whom they are uh, fighting. Jihad includes spending, as the previous page indicates, to back the things that are needed in the, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, spending in the path of Allah. And it also includes sabra, uh, sabra nafs in fighting one's uh, uh, traits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finds odious and re reprehensible. Uh, it is a hadith that is rigorously authenticated, sahih, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the sahih of uh, Ibn Hibban. That he said, Al Mujahid Man Jahid Nafsahu Lilahi Azza wa Jal. The Mujahid is the one who fights his nafs, his the inclinations in himself that are against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects of Mu'mineen uh, for the sake of Allah Almighty Majestic. And there is nothing wrong with ascended whatsoever. It's a Sahih hadith. Even though Ibn Hibban did accept some narrators that were this is not one of them. This is a absolute, uh, absolute a, a chain in which there is nothing whatsoever wrong with it. And so, sabr uh, al-nafs and qital, fighting, the actual fighting that Allah speaks about, uh, and uh, ta talking about the jalu, uh, talut, fighting uh, jalut, and uh, infaq, spending, in the Sahih Sabilillah. Muslim relates in his Sahih that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Asked uh, Ubay ibn Ka'ab, O oh, uh, Abul Mundir, this is his agnomen, it uh, connotes a certain degree of friendship and uh, uh, familiarity with the person who you call Abu Fulan, it's the more, more beloved form of the name uh, in, the, in Arab society. And uh, uh, he said, O oh, Abu Mundir, uh, do you know which of the verses of the Quran you have is the greatest? He said, Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyum qayyum. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, struck Ubayah's chest. And he said, Liyahnika al ilmu ya Abu Mundir. He said, May Allah benefit you and raise your renown, O Abu Mundir. And this is a Sahih hadith from Sahih Muslim also. And so the Prophet confirmed his judgment that this was. Uh, and this verse is the greatest verse because it details the attributes of Allah that describe his supreme and incomparable might and supremacy that provide the backdrop and context of struggle in his path, either against the self or against the, uh, the, the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the other enemies <laughs> of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, uh, and struggle in his path outwardly and inwardly, namely by a tawheed a tam the perfect and complete Tawheed. Uh, and Allah's absolute oneness and uniqueness, Wahdaniya. Wahdaniya is a particular part of the Tawheed. It means that he has la sharika la, that he has no partner in this or in that or in this or that. This is the Wahdaniya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the uniqueness of Allah. And that precludes any deviation from true worship. Rather, the doctrine of the Trinity which Allah has spoken about in Surah Al-Baqarah, Trinitarianism, in other words, believing that there are three I know, persons uh, in God, or idolatry or any other false beliefs, worshiping idols. And that his oneness, Tawheed, is perfectly clear, um, made perfectly clear by this verse, Ayatul Kursi. And, uh, and so that after that, as he says in the next verse that comes after it, there is no compelling anyone to enter the faith. La ikraha fid deen. And uh, so good because it's perfectly uh, clear. And so that, uh, and this is why he says it. So this is the context of the ayah. And it is the greatest ayah of the Quran. Allah mentions in this verse the divine attributes one after another without any and between them. There's no wow atif. Wow latif between them. Like the, each one is a bedal, is a way of restating the previous. And each attribute follows from the preceding one uh, in some way, which in some way in, in, entails it, I, logically follows, or is clarified by it, 
or answers a question that could occur in the mind or heart of the person hearing it. Uh, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah, Allah, there is no God but He. Allah is the subject of the sentence and uh, al-mubtadi. And there is no God but He is the predicate, right, the de description of the. If you say X, uh, an orange is a fruit, for example, so the, the subject and predicate, and is plain as to Allah's absolute uniqueness, affirming the sole one who is and who has no essence, uh, meaning the, what is the essence answer? Essence is, it tells what something is. And so Allah does not belong to any species. There's no such thing as gods of which he is one but rather there's only the one individual. He's the sole individual and he's not, uh, he's, uh, he has no species and uh, that he is merely a member of, but rather Allah, and Allah is the supreme name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that he alone, uh, me, and it means that he alone deserves worship and the servanthood of all to him. Uh, let's see, uh, I know. Al-Hayy, Al-Qayyum. Al-Hayy, the word itself with the definite article El uh, before it, the living, uh, denotes exclusivity. So Allah, no God is there, but He, the living, the everlasting source of all being. And so Al-Hayy, the living, denotes exclusivity, Al-Hasr. In other words, that is the soul, one alive, besides whom there is no other. Uh, there is no other alive, for all others are preceded by non-being and followed by non-being, and intrinsically require another to even exist. Right? They require his being in order to exist. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is the living, whom death and destruction have no effect on whatsoever. Uh, so he is actually alive and truly living, al-hayy al-haqiqi. And others beside him, yani hay majazi, are figuratively speaking alive because they're only alive through his life. And others beside him require his life to exist and be created, existentiated, and maintained in existence through his life. Al Qayyum, and this is a very important thing for people that don't wish to understand what the uh, entire uh, verse is about. This fa'ul pattern, the Arabs denote the patterns of their words with fa'la, which is do, like verb. Uh, and so this is uh, the, the, the qayyum is fa'ul. This pattern of this work is hyperbolic, I emphatic in the extreme, and it's uh, emphatic. Sigatul uh, mubalika, meaning the existent, uh, we, we translate it as. Uh, 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 the everlasting source of all being, uh, meaning the existent through whom alone all other th others exist. Raghab al Asfahani, who, this is why we gave biographies of, of the great Mufassirin in the uh, back of the uh, Quran beheld. And uh, when you want tahqiq, about what the words actually mean. Rabad, Raghab al Asfahani is your man. Isfahani, Persians will object and say, but uh, this is the Arab pronunciation of his name. So Raghab al Asfahani is the top uh, authority. Other Mufassirin, they, according to their knowledge, but he's the one who, if you wish tahqiq, or really to check the thing down and, and get it straight. Uh, so others may find something that he didn't, but he is the one that is the b uh, best lexicographical authority. He says, "Who al qa'im al hafid li kulli shay'in al mu'ti lahu bihi qiwamuhu qiwamuhu al mughni lahu al muqim li ghairihi al adwam." That what it means, al qayyum, is that he is the self-existent who preserves and keeps everything in existence who bestows it its sustenance, subsistence, support, basis, 
and foundation. All of this is the meaning of qiwam. Uh, and all through which uh, it is. In other words, its relationality to all of the things around it and everything that has to do with it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is doing all of these things. You know, supplying is his, its qiwam, who protects and guards and suffices and entirely provides for, uh, uh, for it. al-mughni lahu. The one who perpetually maintains the being of all others besides him. Al-muqim li ghayrihi ala duam. Perpetually. Why does Raghab say perpetually ala duam? From the emphatic form of qayyum, uh, which is fayrul, the highest intensity imaginable or unimaginable, of, of uh, qiyam, uh, meaning uh, being or existence, qiyam, but also support and providing. And qiyam dahu means he's the boss of something, you know, or in charge of something, in charge of something, its maintenance, its undertaking, its performance, its accomplishment, all of these things in the highest degree and forever without end. Allah duam perpetually. So al qayyum uh, sustains everything that exists, nourishes it, provides its risk or sustenance, takes care of everything for the created beings, arranges and organizes and uh, manages and directs and carry out, uh, carries out everything, tadbir lahum, for them. And so what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us for anybody who understands what is being said here is that uh, if there's some particular thing that you possess like more talent than other people or more education than other people or whatever it may be then the proper attitude is not pride the proper attitude is thanks somebody that somebody else is doing everything for him what's he got to be proud of you're not proud of things that other people do <laughs> are you if you are, you're pretty strange. And so Allah is doing it all. And you're just the recipient. The recipient. And so you have to be grateful. And so Al-Qayyum, it's a very, very significant name. I use the, uh, the, in the English translation the words, the everlasting source of all being, to explain the main thrust of this. But the details, of course, elude translation. That Allah is he through whom all else exists. The Prophet, in a hadith in Sahih Muslim, in the chapter of the uh, Salat al-Musafir, the prayer of the traveler, addresses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his istiftah, in the opening of the Salat, with the words, لَبَّيْكْ وَسَعْدَيْكْ وَالْخَيْرُ كُلُّهُ فِي يَدَيْكْ وَالشَّرُّ لَيْسَ إِلَيْكْ وَأَنَا بِكَ وَإِلَيْكْ تَبَارَكْتَ رَمَّنَا وَتَعَلَيْتْ أَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْكْ ever at your service, and may you ever be pleased. And all good is in your hands, and evil is not ascribed to you. And I only am through you, Anabika, and unto you, wa ilayk. How incomparably benefic uh, beneficent you invariably are, O our Lord, and exalted on high in every way. I ask your forgiveness, and to you utterly repent. And the, in which the words, wa anabika wa ilayk, and I am, on, I, am I'm, I only am through you and unto you, express the Prophet's true knowledge of the meaning of al-qayyum and of the ultimate return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم. Slumber and no sleep overtake him. Because human beings may imagine that Allah resembles, uh, may imagine Allah to resemble, at least in some measure, and some or some aspects, what He has created. Allah here clarifies to them that He is in no way like His creation, and reemphasizes that He is El Qayyum who originates, maintains, arranges, and directs everything in existence. And so this sentence confirms the meaning of qayyum and negates anything that human imagination can make an analogy with between themselves and Allah. La uh, The word akht here 
uh, it must be observed, has an important implication. Uh, namely, that it connotes something uh, being overcome by something. They took the citadel. Uh, for sleep overpowers one and sub uh, subjugates consciousness under its sway to unconsciousness. So the Quran mentions in logical order after echt ta'khuduhu uh, that neither sinatun wulanaum, neither a lesser amount or a greater amount of unconsciousness overtake Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Slumber is when you're first kind of nodding off. In the English translation, I have used nor slumber uh, nor sleep taken. I have used nor without a previous neither or other negative uh, because uh, slumber nor sleep overtake him uh, because of the power of its conciseness. And also it has been used in both prose and poetry by other writers uh, among them, uh, among those cited by the Oxford English Dictionary as uh, Lord Byron, who they have a quote from him, a heart that uh, his words, uh, a heart his words nor deeds can daunt the heart that's unafraid of that person's what he may say or do. You know. And Tennyson uh, said, Great brother, thou nor I have made the world. Brother, neither you nor I have made the world. And so he said, uh, Thou nor I have made the world. And other uh, writers and poets. Uh, two, in the Arabic idiom, the negation of the lesser first and the greater second is an emphatic of total negation in the Arabic language. Uh, that, is, that is not infre infrequent as a figure of speech. Uh, one says, for example, Fulan la yaglibuhu al qaid wal al He said, Fulan is not to be overwhelmed by the leader or by the prince, neither one. And so and so cannot be overcome by the commander or the prince meaning that nobody can uh, overcome him. And uh, Sinatun derives from uh, Wasana, the, uh, like other words of this pattern, uh, that begin in a wow, I think, what is it called? Uh, uh, assimilated verbs, I think they're called in English, uh, like uh, Wasala, to uh, uh, reach something or to be connected with something, wasala. Uh, and you have silatun, which is the, uh, the connection, to mean, means connection. So sinatun comes from wasana and uh, means the first drowsiness before sleep overwhelms the senses completely and obliterates waking consciousness. And so it has been uh, translated as slumber meaning to drowse or doze. You, know, you may hear something but not understand it anymore because you're kind of getting out of it. Meaning to drowse or doze, to sleep lightly, the first languidness of sleep stealing over one. Uh, Naum means plain sleep, uh, meaning being fast asleep. The negation of both of these from Allah because, uh, of Allah because he, uh, is because he is the Qayyum who originates and protects and takes care of and manages and arranges everything for everyone and all things. And if either slumber or sleep occurred, he would be unable to attend and to affect everything that he does. Qayyum is samawati wal ard. He's the one who is of the whole. Samawati wal ard is a way of saying, in the, in the Quranic way of saying, the universe, everything, because it means everything in them, uh, and would be suspended from life. Uh, and, and, uh, in the fullest sense of it. Okay. Lahumah. Lahumah fi His is all that is in the heavens and all on earth. A samawat wal ard, as we just said, means, uh, means the entirety of the universe, the whole cosmos. Uh, uh, this sentence uh, confirms as being, some people say, well, there are, there are multiple universes. As Rupert Sheldrake told us when he was standing in this very zawiya, he said there's not a single shred of evidence that there are multiple universes or anything more than the one universe. 
He said, they just made this uh, theory up because it's so incredibly impo improbable that the exact equations that are needed for the universe to exist in the way that it does now could have come together. There are six numbers that are absolutely critical to the fabric of the universe. And if they, they, these had not been conjoined in the, in, the, in the universe, it would not have existed. And so the, uh, the uh, probability of the universe being our universe, uh, Martin Rees, uh, the astronomer royal of Britain at his time, uh, wrote a book called Just Six Numbers. And the, the universe is radically, radically, mathematically improbable. As one astronomer expressed it, it says that the, the, the fact of the universe being is about as likely as a tornado hitting a junkyard and assembling a Boeing 747. And so to explain this, they, they say, well, obviously there, there's no God, so how could it have possibly happened? They said, well, there must be a, a zillions of universes that we don't know about, and this is just one of them. So that an uh, improbable, extraordinarily improbable uh, thing could happen. And he says, there's not one shred of evidence that this is the case. It's just an ad hoc uh, uh, inference from their belief that there is no God to begin with, and there can't be, and there must not be. And so they don't believe that this improbable. And, uh, it shows the hand of a maker, in other words, and they have disliked this exceedingly. And so they fabricated a zillion universes, or an infinite number of universes. So the, there's only one, and it's the Semuat, it means the entirety, the whole cosmos. There are zillions and zillions that we don't know, it includes all of those also. <laughs> and the, the sentence confirms his being the Qayyum, who alone produces and protects and provides and arranges everything. And it also shows that he alone is divine. Dalilun ala tafarrudihi biluluhiya. No God is there but He. I know, so it proves that. And Samuati uh, uh, denotes the totality of the physical world. As Abu Saud says, uh, another of the great ulama of tafsir, uh, not just the heavens and the earth, but rather including all their parts. He said, Bel mayashmalu ajza'ahuma adakhila fihima. But not just the heavens and earth, but, but rather including all their parts they comprise and everything upon them of rational meaning, beings, meaning of angels, jinn, and men, and everything else. Who should ever intercede with him save by his leave? Man uh, it means man hadha ladhi. Often hadha has a harfa tanbi. And that is the real substance of hadha. This it means. And uh, so here, the, the, uh, the tenbi has been eliminated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here. Man dhaladhi means man hadhaladhi. Uh, Literally, who is this that should uh, do it? That, that, that should, uh, who is this that should ever intercede with him, say, by his leave? Uh, and is uh, what they call uh, istifham and qari, a question who's, uh, the, the gist of which is to negate the uh, negational question or interrogative or question that is posed in order to deny the existence of what it asks about. Uh, much as one asks in, uh, about some trivial uh, triviality raised in a conversation, who cares? Meaning, nobody does, so let's talk about something more important. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's, well, so-and-so cares and so-and-so cares. You're not asking for a list of people who care. You're, you're, you're saying this is istifham and qari. You, you, you want to negate the, what the, the, the thing asked about. Uh, nobody does. And so let's talk about more important things. So the rhetorical force here is of saying, just show me who should ever intercede with Allah without his leave. Right. Impossible, ridiculous, and meaning there is nobody. Indicating the absolute summit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's insuperable power and invincible might, and that no one has, the, has a word to speak to him unless he wishes it. 
and no one else even remotely has the effrontery to try in the face of his absolute power. So Iblis spoke to Allah with his leave as Mekrullahi subhanahu wa ta'ala against him, the advising of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against him, and as a test for us. Similarly, the shayateen, Allah has kept him alive until Yom Qiyamah as a test for us. And so that, you know, if you have a great uh, dramatist making a great play, every great drama has, a, 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 regardless of what the, stru- the overall structure of it, whether it's boy against girl or hero wins or something like this, he has uh, foils that the dramatist puts there, uh, checks and challenges that stop the action of the hero in getting what he wants or doing what he, what he should and so forth. And it heightens the drama. And so Iblis is this way, and our, uh, the corporate owners in our time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not keeping them there because he likes them. He's keeping them there that we may overcome them, and that we may dua against them, and that we may free the earth of them, inshallah ta'ala. And all we are accountable to do is to try. And if we uh, say something of a dua, then this is doing something, because we, as Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, believe that the door helped. And so the bad people that Allah, the shayateen, al ins, who are wrecking at the surface of the earth now with their greed and wrecking people and implying, uh, employing uh, neuroscientists to dig man traps for teenagers and others to fall into by using their cell phones and other uh, works of the shayateen are something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in keeping in existence in order to raise us in our station higher. <laughs> Who created death and life for you in order to see which of you is the, was the very best in works. And the best of us is the Rasulullah, but after him, with the, the majal is open, the uh, sphere is open for us to try. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is keeping these characters in existence for the, our benefit, to see if we can do something. And if not, at least we intend to do something, and we try our best to get rid of them from the face of the earth. That's Allah, tawfiq wa tawfiq. And so it, uh, no one has the, remotely has the effrontery to, uh, to try in the face of his, uh, his absolute power. So it denotes his overmastering uh, supremacy, al kibriya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an unspeakable force, al uh, quwa and incommensurable greatness, adama. Illa bi ithni, saved by his leave, that is, except by his enabling the person and him giving his permission or in the case of the shayateen, giving them rope so they can hang themselves, so that they'll spend their eternity in the hellfire. Allah doesn't care about the people that are going to spend eternity in the hellfire. Ha'ula ila nari wa ubadi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith of Qudsi, those shall go to the hellfire and I don't mind. Whether the ones that he cares for, he, he says, khalakas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, khalak al mawt wal hayat, death and life he created to see who is the best. Those are the ones he cares about. And the ones that are the, the scum of the earth and the shayateen and, the, uh, and others that are thwart the mu'mineen are the ones he doesn't care about in the slightest. He just, they're just here for our benefit as a, a foil. Yashfa'u. Mandaladi yashfa'u. Yashfa'u is a madara or imperfect tense. Uh, uh, in, and it indicates uh, any uh, uh, who is there, uh, who should ever intercede with him. Intercede is in uh, imperfect tense. At any, it means at any possible time of all times whatsoever, which is a hyperbole or an, a super emphatic of the negation that this could be possible. Allah is denying that this could ever be possible, ever. And so it has been translated, who should ever intercede with him, say by his leave. I, this is absolutely impossible. Yeah, no. uh, he knows all that takes place before them and what lies yet unknown beyond them. Uh, 
this uh, same expression, bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum, occurs in a number of places in the Quran, and no single rendering can accurately express what they mean. Uh, Shaykh Ali, or Stav, uh, took the time, because of a question of mine, he spent some days researching the, the, the matter, and uh, to go over every single place that it occurs, and answer, to answer my questions about them uh, individually in a session that I recorded that was about 47 minutes long. Uh, and uh, simply put, what Allah intends in each place that these expressions are used varies. And the translation for this locus in Ayat al-Kursi is that of the majority of the greatest of the ulama tafsir, uh, which has been put into English. The point is to, uh, to remember is that both of the two expressions, khalfahum or bayna aidihim, and khalfahum can refer to position in time, space, or both. And so that's not uh, one simple thing. Bayna aidihim merely means uh, before him. Before, the four are the two, the two hands. And be is right, it has, it's almost the identical expression in English. Before someone means in front of him. And by Nidai means in front of something. In, in, uh, oversimplify. So by Nidai here, by uh, in front of them, before their hands, uh, or before them, means the events and actions now and past that people have seen and experienced in their lives. He knows, uh, in which we uh, translated as, uh, he knows all that lies before their eyes and what lies yet un and khalfihim, what lies yet unbeknown beyond them. And so, Abayna uh, Idihim means the events and actions now and past people have seen and experienced in their lives and what their hands have wrought. While Ma Khalfihim means the events obscured behind the veil of futurity that human senses cannot pierce or penetrate, be it in the future or in the next world. You know. And Bikai says, ma bayna aidihim, ma yuhitu bihi hissuhum wa ilmuhum, fa ka'anhu bayna aidihim, wa ma khalfuhum ma la yinaluhu ilmuhum. A very concise definition. What is before them means that which their sense, uh, sense experience encompasses and also their knowledge. Well, what lies beyond them is that which their knowledge does not reach. So the latter includes both their earthly future and the next world, and that's why I translated it as yet unbeknown or yet uh, unknown beyond them. What are you hitun? What are you hitun? and they encompass nothing of his knowledge but what he wills. This is one of the most important, after Qayyum, this is probably the most important fountain of blessings uh, among the others uh, in uh, Ayat al-Kursi. I mean, the meaning of ihata, the root idea of this verb, or it's muster, a verbal noun, is, is such as when one says, ahatu bishay, means I grasped, uh, or I encompassed it, uh, I grasped the thing from every aspect. And uh, the translation, excuse me, is they encompass nothing of his knowledge but what he wills. So, ahat to bishay means I grasped the thing from every aspect or encompassed it in knowledge. In ilmihi, of his knowledge here, uh, here knowledge does not refer to Allah's attribute of knowing or his capacity to know but rather uh, the contents of his knowledge, ma'lum, uh, ma'lum Allah, uh, the contents of his knowledge, that is, the things he knows. As Alusi has mentioned, he said, la yuhituna bishay'in min ma'lumihi. And this is something that all of the Mufassirin concur about. There's not a, any disagreement that I've heard of. So, uh, or Sheikh Ali has heard of, more importantly. And so the meaning is that no one else knows the slightest thing of all that Allah knows about everything except what Allah gives them to know. And mankind is expected to understand that, I know, except what Allah has, uh, uh, has uh, given them to know. Uh, Sheikh Muhyiddin used to deny the term ilm or knowledge to anything except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed. 
uh, whether it be by uh, uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, because this is also Wahi. The Sunnah of the Prophet is also Wahi, غير Matlu, as Shafi used to call it, not recited. And the Quran is the uh, Wahi of Allah that is recited, Matlu. And these two, he didn't call anything else knowledge. Well, what did he call it? What did he call Kalam theology, for example? He called it Fen and Fiqh, Fen and all the other branches of knowledge, fen, which means arts. And this is uh, because these change with the season. You know, uh, who was it, Kuhn, that wrote about the knowledge paradigms. It was a big book when I was in school, 1970s. <laughs> but uh, uh, that the whole paradigm for the way of understanding the scientific revolutions take place in uh, waves, let's say. As uh, Niels Bohr, a great atom a Danish atomic scientist, put it <laughs> sarcastically, perhaps, he said, uh, scientific progress takes place one funeral at a time. <laughs> In other words, when there's a big authority that passes on to the next world, then somebody else becomes a big authority and ma changes things around a little bit in the, the discipline. I know. So from this fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one knows us the slightest of all that Allah knows except that what Allah gives them to know. From this fact and from this ayah and from this book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's book, mankind is expected to understand that people who think they are smart and uh, whose conviction of this leads them to assume they are far better than others and, to, and in understanding everything about the world should think again. <laughs> and realize that no matter what they know, it is infinitesimally and pathetically small in comparison to what there is to know. And, that, and while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, uh, and which Allah encompasses in his knowledge. Uh, among the facts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches about human knowledge, and among them, you know, we, we mentioned uh, Karun. Uh, I know, Nasrullah, we'll talk about him in a minute, inshallah. <laughs> among the things that Allah teaches about human knowledge, uh, and if you want to see the ayahs for this, you can uh, uh, look in the index of the Quran be held under knowledge, comma, human. And you can see the citations uh, that I, but I, I thought it was worth just mentioning them in passing. That the, uh, one's knowledge of Allah himself, that is given by Allah himself, that Allah gives in, in a, a direct disclosure of himself by, to someone by the, the nur of which Allah creates in the heart of a person, uh, which Allah bestows to those that he, lo he loves, the al-ilm al al as it is termed, is commensurate with the level of one's closeness to Allah, the anbiya having the greatest share of this knowledge. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says of al-Khadr, who was a nabi, according to the correct, most correct position. Uh, upon be, uh, uh, upon, be, um, upon be whom be peace in Surah Al-Kahf. وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمًا عِلْمًا because of the tankir and ilman uh, because it doesn't have any uh, uh, article uh, before it. Uh, uh, it's indefinite, in other words. And also the syntax after the مِنْ uh, لَدُنَّا and then it follows. Uh, means uh, and had taught uh, him an unimaginable inner knowledge from our very self. Huge uh, knowledge that no one could possibly understand unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened their heart to. Human knowledge uh, also, to name some other things that Allah tells us, human knowledge is acquired while Allah's knowledge is intrinsic. Allah never had any period in which he didn't know everything. You know, so, so human knowledge depends on learning. Uh, knowledge is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that one should thank Allah for and not pride oneself in over others. Because those who do are cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like uh, Karun, he said, إِنَّمَا أُتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِلِّي I have only been given all of these riches and all of this big house and you know, big everything because of knowledge that I, of tremendous knowledge that I alone possess. And what happened? <laughs> Finito la musica for Karun. 
I know, the earth swallowed him because he was cursed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to teach us something about being proud about one's knowledge. And fourth, human knowledge is not re is, uh, has, uh, has not reckoned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his awesome due. Ma qadrullah haqq qadri. I know. And uh, we don't appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he really is. It's impossible uh, for us to know him like he knows himself. And Ayat of course, Allah teaches us that all human knowledge is, necessar uh, is necessarily fragmentary. fragmentary. We don't know everything about things. If you're so smart, how high, how, how high do you have to heat the acrylic that uh, is pressed through pores in order to make fiber to uh, be uh, spun into yarn and, wo and made into rugs like the one that you're sitting on top of just now? <laughs> well, I have no idea about that. Well, that's one fragment of the knowledge that's not in, within your grasp. And other things. I was, over in Hong Kong uh, two years ago, or more, longer perhaps. I was, you know, up in a high hotel room in China, and uh, looking, I didn't know what to do, with a few extra moments and not enough time to read, but not too more, much to just do nothing. And so I looked down to see what I could see, and at a distance of about 200 or 300 yards or more, a good way away, there are some hard hats down there, and they're builders. They're going to build an un un overpass or underpass. And you know, Chinese builders are famous for how fast they can build things. You know, things that take three years in the West take three months in China. And so I was going to try to see, you know, what what they're doing down there. So I was looking at them, for, you know, from a, a long way off. And they turned around and they looked to see who was looking at them. And they saw me up in my high. <laughs> hotel room, looking down at them, and they start pointing at them, you know. And so, how did that happen? Who knows? Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can people feel that they're being watched? Or, simpler example, you're in the shower and you turn on the hot water and the shower curtain, the plastic shower curtain, starts going towards the water. Why? There's not a physicist on the face of the earth that can tell you, because they don't know. What I'm trying to say is that the belief that science knows, and the science in 2023 knows everything is a super, modern superstition. It doesn't. And the belief that it does is not science, but scientism. That's Allah, that's with tawfiq. And Allah is teaching us this from the very, very beginning. And so human knowledge has not reckoned, oh no. And Ayat al Kursi teaches that all of our knowledge is, all human knowledge is, uh, necessarily fragmentary, fragmentary and perspectival. Where is it? It depends with the perspective from where one is standing. If I raise my hand over on this side, all you guys are seeing it on the other side. He raised his hand on, the, on, on his right side. Well, he, no, he raised his hand on his left side. And the, uh, the face that you think you know so well from looking at it in the mirror for all of these years, is the exact opposite of what everybody else sees. It's a mirror image, it's not the actual face that you're wearing. And so, and so forth and so forth. There's always a perspective. And uh, so it's, and it's perspectival and radically finite. And so save as Allah wills. And this is why Sheikh Mohideen, although he's a somewhat conservative <laughs> estimate of what Elm is, is a pretty good definition because at least it's consistent with itself. I know, and with the facts, save as Allah wills. And so, also, it does not comprehend Allah's glorification by all things. All things are making tasbih of Allah, but we don't know anything about it. Correct, except that it is. And uh, correctly judging many things also, uh, from a human point of view, does not depend on uh, one's education or how learned one is. But, uh, but insight into these things, insight that is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as in as the story of Al Khadr and Musa in Surat Al Kaf demonstrates, Musa learned was had uh, much more knowledge than Khadr alayhi salatu was salam, but Khadr had insight into the particular points that they encountered in their journey together. I know, and so it, it's not uh, depend, it doesn't depend on what you've learned but it depends on your insight that is granted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also. 
And so that's another radically dependent factor. And human knowledge does not know about what new matters Allah will create. Allah has said in the Quran, He's going to create, and He will create, He's creating new things that you know, of, of which you know nothing yet. Uh, and also, uh, the human, human knowledge affirms Allah as one, which is the truth, and He has revealed it. Allah raises whomever He wills in uh, innumerable degrees in knowledge, while Himself is infinitely above the highest. Uh, he himself is infinitely above the highest. Uh, knowledge of religion, uh, we know, raises one's rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, human knowledge has no idea of the, uh, the absolute joy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward for those whom he loves in Jannah or even in this world, except whom he shows it to. And uh, human knowledge is often fooled by the devil's ever-changing rhetoric. In our times, human rights, <laughs> and more than half the world isn't willing to buy it. <laughs> so the devil is ever-changing ever his rhetoric uh, as, he, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself explains in the Quran. Uh, and no soul can tell where on earth it will die, and no soul can tell what it may earn tomorrow. No soul knows when the fire, final hour shall come, uh, shall be. And human knowledge seldom uh, realizes that what one hates is often best for one, and what one loves is often worse for one. It's beyond us and we don't understand it until it actually happens and we get to see it in retrospect. <laughs> and I know. And, uh, and uh, human knowledge is inconsiderably little compared to what there is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and you have not been given of knowledge but merest little. Human knowledge of this world compared to what there is uh, uh, to know of the next world is indeed also very little. Human knowledge decays and it can depart altogether with senility. Uh, the worst uh, enemies of books that are in libraries in our time are the librarians themselves. They're pulping the books, <laughs> even old books that, are, that uh, don't have any other copies made. They're destroying them so they can make shelf space for more books because they don't have space to store them. <laughs> and so it, it decays and can depart altogether and with uh, senility. Uh, Utsi, the 5,000-year-old uh, uh, Neolithic man who fell into a glacier in Switzerland, uh, they pulled him out. They thought he was uh, somebody who just fell in recently because he was all fresh. Uh, what did they find on him? They found, I don't know, about 11 arrowheads you know, defending himself a lot, apparently, from enemies in his body. But they also found a raincoat that actually worked. It was made of layers of sewn uh, uh, pieces of grass, one over another, of a kind of grass that was waterproof. They found a little pouch in his uh, pack with uh, mold, uh, uh, leaf mold of penicillium that one could put on wounds and so they wouldn't get in uh, infected. In other words, everybody is doing science and these things may be lost in a, subse in a, su a subsequent age. And uh, we never, we'd never know it. And, so, and also, knowledge departs with senility for people with Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or other uh, problems, uh, cognitive problems. And uh, uh, human knowledge is prone to the sin of presuming ill about others. You know, I only realize that they're, that they're thinking bad things because I'm so smart. And it's just, you know, it could be just whipping up something in your mind. And so it's prone to sins about others, presuming ill about others with no solid proof. Like the ifk of, about Aisha, the whole Medina was buzzing and everybody gossiping, well, the available information is that she did this and she did that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, never return to it again, meaning that it's a sin to think something about somebody when there's not any solid proof. You know, and, uh, and other sins. So all Allah is telling us over and over that 
priding oneself in mere human intelligence is a big waste of time. And if that's, that's one of the take-homes that I hope that everybody can take home from this, uh, uh, from Ayatul Kursi, inshallah ta'ala. And that could be better spent by drawing closer to Allah by works that Allah loves and states that Allah loves. And finally, Allah will not ask you on the Day of Judgment if you're smart. He'll ask you if you're fair. He won't ask you if you've been smart. He'll ask you if you've been fair. Because it's harder to be fair than it is to be smart. As endless phenomena in this world teach us. And uh, I know, and to, to judge by the world around us, at least, it's a lot easier to be smart than it is fair. So all the branches of human knowledge that we know, insofar as they correspond to the tr truth, uh, which is presumed to be the truth by the people of each historical age, uh, rather than uh, a, a fact, and here's uh, Kuhn's paradigms of knowledge, what is true of them is that Allah has, uh, is, that which is true of them is what Allah has allowed to be disclosed for man in each era. And everything else is just the rhetoric of the time and our uh, uh, conditioning. Uh, I know. So, so, someone said, so indoctrinated about the new generation. That's a little off your topic. We'll stand up for an instant to rest our legs. And then we'll finish the last page. The indefinite of shay. We talked about some of these points in the introduction to this uh, translation, uh, Quran Beheld. And I think it's here and there and in a few places on the internet uh, under the title, uh, The Once and Future Hermeneutic. And so you can look it up uh, and see if you can find it somewhere. And it, it talks about these, uh, these, uh, f many of these fine points. It would serve almost, if, you, if someone were running a school, as a reasonable introduction to the uh, uh, fen of tafsir, I believe, that introduction, or the, the parts of it that are concerned directly with, the, uh, with tafsir. Will I your to be shay in the indefinite of shay, as we've mentioned, uh, the, the indefinite has about eight or nine or ten different Arabic significances I know that most people are not uh, very well aware, aware of. The indefinite of shite here, and they encompass nothing of his knowledge, indicates they don't know the slightest bit of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, save what he wills to disclose uh, to them of it. Illa bima sha, but what he wills is in a positive phrase uh, for the, that uh, after uh, that renames the word bishay, uh, that qualifies and modifies bishay, or a single bit. You know. So, illa bimasha, but what he wants. So, Allah is absolutely and unconditionally the only, uh, the one who knows, and no one else knows anything but what he may impart to them, though his knowledge is absolute, omniscient and not confined to any limits or perspectives of human intelligence. We're just one species of the other species. And the other animals, some of them, I've seen it myself. You can't say that man is the only animal that knows anything about the future or past. When you catch a big seine full of uh, silver salmon uh, in the Pacific, for example, in the North Pacific, uh, if they get the, the net around them and that purse uh, is drawn up, you have to get them in fast. They're a relatively large salmon. They look like a king, like kind of like a blimp shape. Uh, and because they die fast, why do they die? There's no reason for them to die, but they see that, the, that there's no hope. And that they, and they sink. And when the fish dies, it sinks. And uh, it may pull the boat over, and that be the end of the, the boat also. And so you have to get them in in a big hurry. So this means that they have a uh, they have an idea of futurity that is pretty advanced, that is pretty, and so we can't assume that the perspective, uh, the perspectival nature of human nature of human knowledge, guarantees that all are. And this uh, should be enough. I've heard that there's some uh, that there's a great enthusiasm for kalam among the tulab elam in some places, and uh, kalam is about the way human words work. And uh, one of the best, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Shahid al-Haq about it is Imam al-Ghazali who spent 20 years at it. 
and decided that uh, it's good for some things but not good for others. And that's the law of Tawfiq with Tawseer. Uh, if you wish, you might read uh, uh, an article about Kalam and, uh, Kalam and Islam uh, that I wrote for Nisrallah and Tawfiq with Tawseer about Imam Ghazali's perspective, and so, which I agree with. Wasi'ah, Fadl Sidi. His very footstool encompasses the heavens and earth. Here Allah mentions one of his creations in order to give an, a, some idea of the incommensurable vastness of his sovereignty, power, and domain. For the heavens and earth include the entire cosmos, lock, stock, and barrel, and the kursi according to the strongest position of the ulama of tafsir and hadith also. Uh, in Alusi's words, is the ajismun bainiyadai al-arsh, in other words, something that's sub-arsh, an object that sits before the throne. And it is smaller than the throne, yet encompasses the heavens and the earth. So uh, that, uh, uh, so what then may one suppose about the tremendousness of the throne is the message. And this is why I've translated it as his very footstool, very, that is, let alone the throne, which is the greatest of all created things. The ulama of tafsir say that seven heavens and, and footstool uh, in relation to the throne, arsh, are like a small ring lost in the sands of a vast trackless desert, kahalakatin fi sahra, as they say. And uh, some of our brothers went on the Hijra uh, walk, the same route that the Prophet ﷺ took from Mecca to Medina, uh, traveling in his Hijra. And they walked over the same ground, and they got an idea what some of these metaphors mean in Arabic, like a little tiny ring in a vast desert. Indeed, it's not very, it's not very super big compared to the throne. I know. So what may then one suppose uh, uh, about the uh, about the throne. And so, uh, as to what exactly the throne and footstool actually are, we really know little more about, uh, uh, more than that they are the manifestations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's infinite sovereignty, or in Arabic, min mudahiri mulkida. Uh, we use the expression footstool, although the, uh, the wording of Surah Al-Ikhlas precludes and negates kulhu Allahu ahad. It means that he's uncomposed of parts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the wording of Surah Al-Ikhlas precludes and negates the attributes of creatures such as having arms and legs and so forth, and uh, the tarkib, that there is a uh, assemblage of parts that make up Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, of Allah, to negate tarkib. Uh, Ibn Abbas defines the word kursi uh, as a place for two feet to rest, mawdi qadumain, and so it has been translated as footstool, uh, footstool. Almost all the other English translators that I know of, except uh, Abdul Haq Biuli and Aisha Biuli, uh, because they depended more on tough seers than others, uh, and possibly, uh, I, don't, I haven't checked off in Zaki, uh, he also had a uh, hand in tough seer. Uh, have, trans have rendered it as throne, but in the literature of tafsir, it is other than and different from the arsh, or throne. Smaller than it, and, a foot and footstool is the correct word. I know. So I was forced into, uh, with a quandary in indexing it, in indexing this verse, the throne verse, and somebody wants to look up the throne verse. And so uh, I, I, uh, the English, everyone in the English-speaking world knows this verse as the throne verse due to pre the previous translator's unfamili unfamiliarity with tafsir literature. And so I listed in the index as uh, throne verse, but with quotation marks around the word throne uh, to indicate the mention of the word rather than its use. Uh, Wasi'ah means that the footstool is greater in expanse than the seven heavens and could contain them, not that it does contain them. Uh, so I've used the word compasses, which means this, like encompasses, which it is briefer than and better in sound to the ear. It's encompassing them, according to lexicographers, as a taswir from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or figurative usage by Allah to depict its magnitude to human beings in a way that they can grasp, imagine, and understand. 
uh, by a figure of speech that they are used to. And since his very footstool encompasses the heavens and earth, so does his power and his reign, sultanahu. So it is to clarify the infinite magnitude of Allah, of Allah's tremendousness in a way that is utterly clear and plain. And uh, I know, wabilai tawfiq. Wala ya'uduhu. Wala ya'uduhu hifduhuma. Uh, and preserving them, the heavens and earth, burden him not, uh, uh, burdens them, him not. Add uh, yu'ud, the verb means to weigh heavily down upon something, and so as to bow it down, or to, excuse me, bow is what we say, I don't know if it's colloquial from my part of the country, but we would say it bowed the thing, it made it you know, bow like a bow and arrow. Uh, it bowed it uh, down, and uh, all the stick bent or bowed so that uh, B-O-W-E-D is what I'm trying to pronounce. So uh, uh, placed, uh, uh, so that from the intensity of the weight, it uh, bowed. Just as when a man is placed under a huge load, he is bowed down by it. So, uh, and also, uh, the only place that there's a related term is uh, when the infinite, uh, when the infinite, when the infant girl uh, was murdered by burying her under the ground because they can't, couldn't stand females because the males were more valuable or prestigious for the family, to the jahili pre-Islamic period of ignorance, when they, when she shall be asked for what sin were you killed, you know, and uh, ma'uda. It means uh, weighed down by the Torab, by the earth that they buried her under. I know, so it's also related, a related term. Uh, so the meaning here is that preserving the heavens and earth does not weigh heavily down on him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or as I put it, pre- preserving them burdens him not. So the intent is to show, uh, to show us the in- insuperable greatness of Allah Most High, giving the uh, universe's uh, incredible size and uh, its uh, kaleidoscopic range of different inertial frames of reference, ranging from the scale of the microphysical subatomic worlds, the direction and velocity of all the subatomic particles is under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's supervision and arrangement and uh, creating and uncreating at every moment. And uh, let alone, this is you know, how many billions on your, on your fingernail, <laughs> and let alone and so the kaleidoscopic range of different inertial frames of reference, uh, reference uh, ra- ranging from the scale of the microphysical subatomic worlds to the almost incomprehensible scale of, for who of us can grasp the actual significance of a 372-digit figure, <laughs> you know, this many light years from, the, from this, I know, of the numeral, uh, of the supra, uh, Galactic, inter, uh, intergalactic reaches of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's in, uh, creation uh, to show us that neither bringing them forth from nothingness to existence by a single word kun, be, and it is, or nor arranging all the ties uh, between all of the different parts interrelationally uh, uh, that they're artic- articulated in with each other within their manifold different time frames and velocities, nor the preserving of the entirety as a whole, weighs in the least heavily upon its omnipotent maker, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qayyum is samawaitu al the everlasting source of all being. The expression la ya'uduhu intimates the unutterable weight and mass of the cosmos. How heavy is it compared with the strength of any creature that is within it? And how all this indescribable weight means nothing to the incommensurable power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa huwa la ali al adhim for the city. Wa huwa al ali al adhim. And he is the all high, the incomparably supreme, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, here, since he has mentioned preserving the heavens and earth, which are palpable, perceptible realities to human senses, lest human beings imagine that Allah is a corporeal, a corporeal uh, physical body like they are, 
Allah closes the greatest ayah of his book with a, uh, by negating any semblance to himself uh, by created things. Al-Ali, al he says, Al-Muta'ali an al-Ashbah wal-Amdad wal-Amthal wal-Azdad an al-Naqs. The ever all gloriously exalted in the highest, above and beyond all figures or shapes, all measures, all semblances or likenesses, all contrarieties or opposites, and above and beyond any lack, deficiency, fault, or imperfection soever. And Bakari says, Al Ali, I la rutbata illa wahia mun hatatun min rutbet an rutbetihi. The glorious and exalted means that there is no rank except uh, that is far, far beneath his rank, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, uh, I know. And so, al Adim means the sole possessor of all greatness, which I've translated as the incomparably supreme. And uh, Alusi says, Hu al Adim wa kullu shay'in bil adafati ilayhi haqir. Uh, he is the incomparably supreme in comparison to whom everything else is wretchedly low, base, contemptible, and despicable in comparison. So, to summarize, and all of these, uh, the ayahs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in his book are uh, for us to understand and to feel something of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the power of his words and to understand about something about ourselves when all else fails read the directions as my father used to say when we were trying to figure out how to put things together ourselves with, at home <laughs> and so the, the, to summarize the effect that Allah creates in those who understand Ayatul Kursi uh, is uh, a humbled one uh, uh, and uh, uh, and dread uh, 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 dread for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and on the other hand uh, you know, humbled is the opposite of proud if you're going to be proud of something be proud of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's taking the time to make you a mu'min that he's taking the time to deal with you on a basis in which will guarantee you happiness forever and ever and ever he's something to be proud about as they say Whoever is proud of anything besides Allah humiliates himself. You know. And so humbled with humbled awe and dread for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gratitude and love for him by having uh, for, for the for the favor from him of having anything to do with the likes of us. He alone is the all gloriously high beyond comparison or human comprehension. And anyone who thinks of himself as smart or superior or at a high level of intelligence intelligence or fortune or wealth or command or superiority has to come down and worship Allah as a grateful slave. Even if you have big acts of worship that other people don't have, who is going to guarantee that they're accepted until you get both feet in Jannah? You can go brag there. Nobody will be interested because they'll be so busy with uh, Allah's joy that he creates in their hearts there with everything that they won't, it won't matter. I don't. So you shouldn't brag here and you shouldn't brag there, in other words. But if you must brag there and not here. I know. So anybody who thinks of themselves as smart or superior at a high level of intelligence, fortune, wealth, command, or superiority has to get back and come down and worship Allah as a grateful slave or Allah will bring them down as he, is, as he did uh, Karun. What do all the great financiers say of our time say? The exact words, word for word. I have only been give it, given it because of special knowledge that I alone possess. This is what they think. Yeah, the, well, the damned all bear a resemblance to each other. And so don't resemble them. Allah. And so if you are so smart or powerful or rich, then just keep death away from yourself. And if you cannot, then draw near to Allah by the means that he teaches us in his book and on the tongue of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the prophet, who said in a well-authenticated Hassan hadith related by Nisa'i, من قراء آية القرسي دبر كل صلاة آية مفرودة لم يمنعه دخول الجنة إلا أن يموت 
the Prophet ﷺ, he said, whoever recites ayat al kursi after every uh, salat, a prescribed salat, the five salats, salats uh, nothing will prevent his entering paradise but that he has to die first. <laughs> I know. But here, as in every letter of the Qur'an, the real message is to read, understand, change, and do. And you, will, and you will find yourself closer to Allah, for whatever is for Allah is connected. As they say, Whatever is for the sake of Allah is connected, and whatever is not is dissevered. Allah tawfiq wa taysir wa taqiq fil nasir. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanakallah wa rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Astaghfirullah wa atubu alayk. Inshallah we'll return uh, next week to uh, al-ma'arij. Inshallah the ascending. Uruj doesn't mean just to go up, but it means to go up at an angle. And so the mighty ascending pathways. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the law and tawfiq what I say. Alhamdulillah. Ya Allah. And the very last of their every dua, I am paradise, is Alhamdulillah. Al-Fatiha. Thank you for attending today's live session with Sheikh Nuh Keller on the tafsir of Ayat al Kursi. We pray that you benefited immensely from exploring the potency of Allah's language and choice of words. Uh, today's lesson covered a single ayah. Consider then how much more there is to learn uh, from, from following up and studying the rest with Sheikh Noor. To plain is offering the opportunity to continue studying this through part three, which is the next course in the Quran, Beheld the Highest Signs series. We will share a discount code with you in a few moments that will give you a special 25% discount for part three of the high signs, which begins next Sunday. This code will be available for 48 hours. If you register for the course within 48 hours, you will also receive immediate access to lessons on the full tafsir of Surah Al-Fatiha, with, with, which uh, Sheikh Nuh Kela had given before the start of the high signs course. The High Signs course represents the culmination of 17 years of Sheikh Nuh Keller's work translating the Quran. It forms the basis of a future work on tafsir. When you use the discount code, the, the full course cost will mean that for $18 a week, you get 60 minute live lessons with Sheikh Nuh per week, accompanied slides of the Quran be held in Arabic and in English, um, academic notes that are added by uh, our academic staff after each lesson with meticulous details taken from the highlights that Sheikh Noh gives in each one of the lessons. Uh, direct access each week to ask Sheikh Noh questions that he's, he then answers live in the following lessons. So if you've had questions today, you know the value of that um, and being able to ask Sheikh Noh about, uh, further about the meanings and, and uh, the teaching material of, of, the, of the course. And these lessons are also recorded and uploaded within 24 hours, and the recordings are available for you to review at any time uh, on the on the Kiflain um, course backend. We're also including a downloadable studio recitation of the entire surah that Sheikh Noor is teaching at any given point, that was uh, recorded by Imam Masjid Bushra and Amman Sheikh Abdullah Adil, and um, finally. We have a student support team that provides assistance with technical access, academic materials, and Q&A transmission to Sheikh Noor. Um, so that is included with this discount code, Quran Be Held uh, 23, when you're signing up on kiflain.com. And uh, a special note for um, guests that we've had today from Egypt, India, and Pakistan, please feel free to use that email address, support at kiflain.com. Um, to contact us um, for a special special discount that applies to people from from that region, um, and finally, act in the next forty eight hours and register so that we, we you can get the the um, registration to the course at a discounted rate as well as the Fatiha Tafsir recordings. We thank you again for attending, and we ask you uh, for your dua uh, for the success of. Um, Kiflain and these courses with sincerity and salams. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.